Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to explore the types of musicians and pianists out there. And if you are starting off or if you are somewhere in the middle of your journey as a piano or a keyboard player, maybe this video will give you some insights as to what you can end up becoming. Maybe you have some specific goals in mind and hopefully this talk can get you to understand what exactly should I practice or what exactly should I focus on if I have a specific goal. For example, if I'm a singer who plays the piano, I don't want to do things which normal, classical or solo pianists tend to play. Or if I'm a music producer and if I feel that you know, I just have a MIDI controller and I feel I can get by. I can kind of draw, use loops or draw the notes and do a few basic chords here and there. Is it important to learn some decent enough piano, you know? And if you're playing in a band, if you're playing in a rock band or a blues band or any, any ensemble... Is that your goal, you know? And Or is your goal all of these? Do you want to be a solo piano a player? Are you a singer-songwriter? Are you the singer? Do you play with a bunch of choirs? Do you want to play with an orchestra or a rock band? You know, if you want it all. So this video will just give you the general approach towards all of these styles of playing the piano. And I'll also be giving you a few examples and also talking about the general music education ecosystem. What exactly is taught and what does it focus on? And is that is there a loophole there? Is there something which it's not telling you? And also is there a problem with learning music in general from YouTube, which you are learning now, I know. But there are some problems of learning music on YouTube as well. You have to go back to some old school approaches. Okay, before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider following us on Patreon. You'll get my handwritten notes for all that we do on our YouTube channel. And also there's a subscribe button somewhere. If you haven't hit it, it'll be nice if you can turn it on and also the bell for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. First of all, how are piano players or keyboard players broadly categorized? I would say there are accompanist pianists and there are solo pianists. The accompanist will always work with another instrument, at least a singer. You can be an accompanist for your own voice if you are a singer-songwriter. You know, you can just play a few chords. <laughs> And then you have to practice bringing in a melody line na, 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 or you're composing something. Na, 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 okay, So the accompanist piano player generally will not play the melody. Maybe a few fillers here and there between the melody. Like if I go... Na, na, play a filler but very rare more often than not you're just holding a rhythm pattern and playing over a chord progression so if there's a four chord song you figure out a rhythm pattern and you figure out a rhythm style that's your general approach are you going to play chord patterns are you going to play blocks broadly accompaniment patterns could be divided as block styles broken styles where you break the chord up into two pieces in this case or arpeggios where it's completely broken and then you have patterns around it like you don't have to only go blocks like this you can add some rhythmic hit points based on the subdivisions you're choosing to play on or the genre of music. Also, when you're an accompanist, you'll also have to decide whether you're doing an independent bass pattern in your left hand and an independent chord pattern in the right hand or whether you want to syncopate or whether you want to play the two hands together. Something like this. Left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right. Mm. This offers a very drum-like approach. Kick, snare, snare, kick, snare, snare, kick. 
or do you want to keep something very consistent in the right hand like a broken chord system like this and do you want to play a, a bass movement focus is actually more on the left hand my creativity is on the left hand to give me movement between the chords between the roots of the chords let it be let it be oh was was no let it be you could be accompanying by playing a very uh, iconic or a very idiomatic pattern for a specific genre of interest let's say if you're doing something on blues now this sounds pretty cool it could work as a solo also i guess for some scenarios but it's more to accompany you know <laughs> something maybe more salsa okay so you'll have certain salsa montunos you'll have certain blues phrases even for the left hand you need to also think of the piano when you play two hands as the right hand is more of your more like a guitar if you think about it it's more a chord strumming agent no it's it's helping you with that department and the register of the right hand unless you play like this which is not ideal is around middle c or from middle c and above this is where you're going to exist so the right hand has to think more like a like a stringed instrument or a, a guitar player or a banjo player so if you're doing arpeggios it's pretty much what a guitar player or a banjo artist would do now in the left hand you're thinking a lot like a bass player so you don't want to play full on block chords you would like to think of playing a bass line like sparse at specific hit points and it'll it'll be very drum like in nature and very bass like in nature so the approach for both hands as an accompanist is very specific to the instruments you are trying to simulate in a sense the piano can can kind of morph into playing so many instruments you can think of it as a as a drum kit you can uh, you can think of it as guitar here and a bass guitar here so you can look at it in different ways and apart from controlling the chord progression of the song you also need to control the dynamic state of the song or the energy levels of the song and that needs to work with your volume control so so there are some patterns especially if you play them softly with subtle volume changes they work well in this register and they work well with that arpeggio pattern you know but if you take some staccato stuff you can combine it with legato to provide a very theatric kind of effect okay so when you're accompanying you're working generally for the melody where can you play or where do you exist as an accompanist you can work as a singer songwriter so if you're singing a melody it's always nice to have the piano guide you or the guitar if you're a guitar player with the chords it makes your melody a lot better so let's say you're coming from a space where you haven't even played the piano before or you're just a singer who studied vocals for x amount of time 
you should definitely consider learning the piano to practice your vocals better you can do your exercises you know la 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 not that i am doing it very well but you get the idea so you can do vocal drills even when making a melody sometimes the melody notes which you choose as a singer comes from the chords that the musicians are playing so if you are in control over the chord let's say you're playing g minor which is g b flat d you have the option of singing any of these three notes la 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 so la 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 and then if i change the chord la da 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 it can inspire a new melody so just for the sake of composing i think you should learn the piano in an accompanist style because you don't have to go the classical route where you learn these very virtuoso song that's more for a solo piano player to <clears throat> express their skills okay so as an accompanist you can just say i want to compose better or i am a singer or <clears throat> i'm a violin player or i'm an instrumentalist and i want to figure out a way to arrange my music better so it's more from a composing perspective or <clears throat> i want all of my ingredients with me my pen and paper for writing the lyrics of course my voice is there at all times and my piano so you have enough and more you have a piano for chords and rhythm you have your voice for melody and you have a pen and paper for your lyrics so as a singer songwriter you definitely need the piano okay another place where you will probably exist as a as a accompanist is if you have a friend i'm sure you'll have a lot of friends and a lot of people out there who sing so you can just offer your services at a local cafe or pub or venue and just play do do a few songs with them for a for a gig uh, you can also play in a choir it could be about 100 singers which will which will have to trust you because they will rely on you for timing the conductor will also rely on you for your changes and pitching and what not and in a choir environment it's quite difficult to survive if you've not practiced it's probably the toughest environment i have ever dabbled into and i would still enjoy playing with a choir the most because of the challenge you have to you know even one mistake you make will the audience may not feel your mistake but because of that the entire choir is lost they will stop singing okay and then of course you have a rock band kind of accompanies where in a rock band what you would end up doing is you'll probably end up you could even play a riff as an accompaniment in a rock band you know <laughs> because it's a piano you can do different things in both hands or just chords but following the drum so in a band you have to follow each other or you could play a riff which is a a low end bass line or a melody line which will be part of the song and the vocal sings over that particular riff it could probably even be a a higher riff you know it could be a line which is ri- running alongside the melody line for example billy joel songs or bruce hornsby songs or even uh, the, that very famous vanessa carlton song which i'm sure you've all heard that intro of and the last environment which i think you'll find yourselves in very often these days is the production and the arrangement environment where you have a software you have a daw recording application you use things like midi or you know various audio cables to record your instruments so i would encourage there also to be an accompanist and learn accompaniment if you have done solo piano playing only and if you've learned let's say moonlight sonata for elise and what not you need to also understand that it's not going to enable you to play in a studio on time at 85 beats per minute that's a completely different environment so you will have to learn how to practice with a metronome that's a very important skill now coming to solo piano playing the way i see solo piano playing especially for my own learning of my own career path is i am not a 
solo pianist on stage i don't perform i perform very rarely even in my own band called the jason zack band i'm more of an accompanist we have a flautist who solos and even when i compose i always like to think of some other instrument a lead instrument doing the melody so in my world if i have to bring out the melody as a solo piano player i first look at myself as a functional musician so in a studio environment if there is a singer and if i want to give them a melody i have to be able to sing that melody i can i can tell that singer see okay you sing la ra ra re ra re ra ra okay but if you find that you're not able to sing at the time and if you don't feel you have a good enough voice you can play that melody in the right hand or you can perform that melody and then get other musicians like a a lead player or a flautist or a saxophonist to follow you and i would always suggest that you look at solo piano playing this way you take a song first accompany for that song you know let's say um the uh, something like this so what i am doing is i am just singing the melody and figuring out the chords and thinking of what pattern i would play getting acquainted with the timing of the music and then you will have to take whatever pattern you have learned here to figure out a way now to move that entire pattern to the left hand and now figure out a left hand pattern so with solo piano playing i think it's always going to be a lot more challenging than accompaniment from the point of view of hand independence accompaniment will definitely ensure that your timing is on point your chord changes are correct you know the melody you're training your ear melody with harmony you're getting that that bond really well oiled in your head and then you t- go to the solo piano environment and play some kind of a chord pattern in the left hand with the melody line in the right hand and the flow chart i tend to follow is if you take a tune like maybe this one na 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 one more time a left hand pattern na 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 which is not compromised let's say you want to do this arpeggio and you have to get this pattern you don't want to do well unless you like that pattern but what's happening in my case is i'm actually simplifying my proposed left hand pattern i wanted so what i do is before i even attempt to play it on the piano i first sing the tune and then whatever i sing i like to play along with my voice one more time and then you focus on the ornamentation you know like maybe of fillers but don't compromise the left hand so what we tend to do normally when we practice solo piano is we tend to follow a top down approach top down meaning you're starting with the melody and you want to nail the melody you want to perfect the melody no matter what and no matter what will result in lots of cases as a compromise in the left hand what i mean by that is you will end up just playing the root notes of the chords or you'll just play a pattern which is kind of working like this usual root fifth and octave kind of pattern so what do you specifically want to play in the left hand practice that first that should be the approach for a solo piano player develop this and it becomes very future proof as well because if you learn 
this pattern for one song. You can do this for a lot of other songs. You can do it for a lot of things, maybe even this one. becomes a very future proof technique you you want to get that pattern no matter what and it becomes like a like a tennis serve it just happens you have the technique for it and you've tried it out and you just have to get it song by song or match by match in the sports example okay so a good way to do this would be let's say you have a pattern like maybe this one this is working as an accompaniment pattern i guess na 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 da na 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 this is a song already i think Okay, now you have to figure out a way to get that same vibe with just one hand so figure out a way to play the original melody of the song in the right hand alongside that combo pattern this is a good approach for solo piano playing which i like to call bottom up so top down not recommended because our ear and our brain we all enjoy the melody so we want to put in all the spice and all the investment of time into the tune even a small slide of a note we want to do all those ornaments fillers but then our left hand becomes very beginner level or not even any level sometimes so what we do with a top down approach we compromise so you can kind of make this a very safe way to you know educate people also which may be a bit misleading like i find a lot of exams out there or examination systems out there they want to cater to a mass audience or a mass set of learners so what's the easiest thing to do make everyone feel good so you don't focus a lot on the left hand patterns you focus more on the melody so it's going to be melody with ridiculously simple left hand patterns which anyone who's been taught only left hand patterns for about 6 months can probably compete with a grade 3 or something like that you know so that's one approach so i find that when they try to make it an education system what happens is they want to cater to more people and they, the only way to do that is they all have to feel happy doing it you know so you can't blame the exam systems but it is what it is it's i feel very top down and i would say the same thing with youtube channels if you're following a youtube piano channel you'll find some of the most ridiculous channels out there they'll teach you to play you know happy birthday with the notes written out only on white keys and just one finger at a time and it goes so uh, ridiculous even more ridiculous where they do that on an ipad and it's actually branded how to play um happy birthday on any keyboard you know it, it's easy it's all clickbait and these are things you should should not fall uh, into because it it's just completely going to ruin your sense of the piano and your overall journey as a piano player and if you're starting off it's a horrible thing to start wrong i had the opportunity of doing a bit of classical doing a bit of classical pieces because i'm in a very western and an indian classical family to my luck so i've ended up having that approach but i've also realized the importance of playing with other musicians playing with a choir if i have to do a show with a choir or a band i mean i would do that any day than you know any of the exams or any of these other systems out there because those events or those concerts even if it would were to be a theater production puts you very much on the spot so you'll practice a lot harder your you take a lot more ownership and 
who cares about getting certain amount of marks you have about 1000 people who might throw something at you if you do something wrong that's a bigger incentive to practice if you ask me the other thing which i tend to mention sometimes in my ranting videos would be these arranger keyboards now in this context of me talking about top down where you start with the melody the arranger keyboard manufacturers will take huge advantage of this like the yamahas and the casios and what not now i am not saying they make poor keyboards they make great keyboards in fact they make great digital pianos midi workstation midi controllers workstations and the like but for the budget market which is usually the beginner market they are going to give you these buttons you press the button drums will flow from nowhere you hit another button and hit literally one key a c and you'll have a rock band playing for you with some orchestration and all that and again the education guys capitalize and make that an education system which i think is a huge disservice especially to younger learners children and also any even an adult learner who's just starting off this top down approach has just taken over and uh, we don't want it to conquer all musicians just because they are forced to just feel good while playing you're not supposed to just win in sport right you're supposed to sweat it out and then win and lose a lot more than you win in the initial stages and as you go forward so that's why we love sport so i think that's the same culture we have when it comes to learning music but with modern day technologies like youtube the arranger keyboards and the examination bodies and the systems trying to you know kind of contaminate things a bit you're going to do top down and because of that you tend to forget what the left hand is up to and top down means you focus on the melody now you tell me if your only focus is melody why do you have to learn piano in the first place why can't you just learn the flute which is a way more uh, sophisticated melodic instrument or become a saxophone player or a sitar player or a sarangi player or any melodic player invest your time there and learn the gamakas and the in between glides and slides and bends and what not between the notes maybe the piano should not be even considered in the first place okay so enough of my rant about the top down approach which i as i just wanted to passionately try to share with you that i don't like instead start with bottom up and top down can happen in the latter stages of your piano playing do bottom up because the other important thing is the bottom up approach will focus on all the other foundational skills music theory ear training your sense of timing your reading ability you'll have to practice some specific exercises you'll respect those exercises a lot more rather than you know how a top top down guy or a melody focused player will just do the exercise oh i have to do my scales so i'll just do whatever i'll just do my scales up and down no why are you doing that so the exercises will be giving you a lot more context if you practice in the bottom up focus on the chords focus on the pattern stay on time sing the melody then play the melody we leave some more accompaniment lessons in our description you can check it out but in a nutshell what i wanted to communicate in this talk was the difference between an accompanist and a solo piano uh, arranger or solo pianist an accompanist will work in a lot of environments a singer songwriter environment a choir a band a studio an orchestra a theater production and what not a solo piano player now here's something about playing solo which i don't do a lot of but when you play solo the pressure is totally on you so you when you're playing solo you have to also deal with pressure because it, you're the only player uh, in in the mix there's no one who's going to support you if you make a mistake and so on and so forth so the mindset for both needs to be slightly different and if you are let's take a few case studies if you are a singer who's who who's written some melodies who wants to get into some form of composition and you want to take up the piano or the guitar so please take up the piano don't want the guitar piano is better trust me just kidding so take up the piano and 
learn what you really need to do on the piano which helps you be a better singer songwriter don't do classical uh, moonlight sonatas of the world instead focus on chords focus on inversions focus on shifting between the chords develop a lot of rhythm patterns which can allow you to play and explore a variety of genres if you are a music producer improve your ear improve your theory because you'll have to transpose a lot you'll have to harmonize the melody and again you have to be damn good at chords and you have to know how to count you have to be very good at timing playing with a metronome so if you're an electronic producer or and even if you're playing in a band if you're playing in a band you need to li- learn how to listen to the other elements what are all your other musicians doing your part comes last every other part is more important than yours figure out a way to then if you want to do solo piano arrangements maybe you want to form your own youtube channel and release covers of songs or your compositions think of it first from a singing perspective and then accompany your voice and then bring it out on the on the right hand with the melody line with a proper full on accompaniment pattern which was built from the bottom up not melody first and then simple left hand or in some cases no left hand which is horrible so uh, play it in the most healthy atmosphere possible and don't aim for immediate results you want a future proof strategy so you need to respect the process process is more important than the result and the result doesn't have to be just the next song you're doing i hate it that way the result should always be long term <clears throat> so what are your long term goals probably as a singer songwriter your long term goal is to play a 45 minute concert at a at a festival or at a local cafe or pub so what do you need to do to build towards that you need about 10 songs each song will have a chord progression multiple patterns so just figure that out and then can you sing along with that is your singing compromised is your emotion as a singer compromised is your timing okay you know and uh, are you forgetting th- are you forgetting to entertain the crowd because as a singer you're also a performer your stage presence is very important if you're a solo piano player what is your again what is your long term goal <clears throat> you want to be able to just take any song out there and master it so maybe you need to train your ears you need to improve your theory you need to be able to transpose you need to be able to do so many things you need to just become a better musician i guess at the end of the day that's what i mean by start at the bottom start at the foundation right guys hope you found this talk useful and i hope you can apply some of it let me know what you thought about in the comments and give us some suggestions uh, which we can use for future videos as well we'd be happy to hear from you thanks a ton for watching the video if possible please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications and if you'd like to learn very structured 6 month semester at our music school nathaniel school of music do head over to our website fill up a form or reach our course advisor via whatsapp call or email or chat on our site cheers catch you in the next one